When it comes to sci-fi games, we've somewhat been let down in the past few years. So does Bethesda's next game and brand new IP hold out a new final frontier for sci-fi fans? Maybe so. This is of course Starfield, an upcoming action role-playing video game that is described as a next generation experience for gamers. As a sci-fi fan, I am massively excited. That's why we're here. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are go for launch. Releasing later this year on November 11th, important date by the way, Starfield will set players outward from the solar system by approximately 50 light years in a location called the Settled Systems. Players explore the star system through two of the largest factions, the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective, both engaged in the Colony War, with the actual game taking place 20 years after said war. As players, we get to join the Constellation, an organisation of space explorers and set off on a unique visiting locations and basically going where no man has gone before, or in this case where a man has gone before and woman. You get the point, we're exploring where people have kind of explored before, but also doing our own thing. You're probably wondering what do you actually do in Starfield and what makes it a next-gen experience that it's sort of being touted as. Well, I've got some more information for you today, so I'd like to introduce you to what Starfield actually is, because I'm very excited for it, and if you're keen to follow the latest Starfield news, hit that subscribe button to learn more about the game the moment we get more details. So, exploring unique and interesting locations is something I'm really interested and keen for. Not only do we get to visit a vibrant environment like New Atlantis, but also explore other factions like the Crimson Fleet, who players can align themselves with and work with in-game. Bethesda have somewhat made it obvious that exploration is at the heart of Starfield and what people can be expected to be doing in-game, so if you like looking at pretty Starfields, you see what I did there, you're probably going to love this game to be fair. Speaking of exploration by the way, and this gets cool here, we do have city hubs in game, with New Atlantis being home to the United Colonies, we've also got two others in game so far, I think Atlantis is probably going to be my favourite, because I like Stargate Atlantis. Anyway, with Aquila City, this is where people are about freedom and individuality, sounds like Bristol, we also got Neon City aka Space Las Vegas, that's built in an aquatic world where fishermen discovered a particle fish that could be turned into drugs, sorry a particular fish. Either way, it kind of makes sense. At the end of the day, this is a space game and the joy of space, as shown through many shows like Star Trek and The Expanse, is exploring the final frontier. One of the art directors, Matt Carfano, mentioned the idea of what's out there, what's past planet Earth, and that is the driving the design and art direction for the game. Referring to the next generation components of the game, this sort of first not only the gameplay experience, but what is overall in the game. Todd Howard points this out by saying that we have that step out moment into the world, again connecting with the exploration gameplay of Starfield, but also something else. He mentions that players' expectations have changed, therefore they really want to focus on making sure Starfield has that step out moment, or being cryptic about what that moment actually is. Now speaking about something that's particularly interesting myself is in-game companions, it's something that will capture my attention to the full, mainly as it's sort of teased by one of the trailers of the game, and I'll be able to get a robot mech droid. I'm not sure what the technical name is, but I want this loaderbot looking guy to be helping me out on missions and doing various tasks. I'm a superman, I see robot, I want it. As long as it's not going with Battlestar Galactica, we should be fine. Back in toasters. Fun fact by the way, this robot we see in the trailer is called Vasco, or Vasco, however you want to pronounce that. So far it's confirmed that over 1,050 voice lines in Starfield. For comparison, Fallout 4 had 111,000 and Skyrim only had 60,000, only by the way. Now, Bethesda have said that the conversational complexity is an example of how Starfield will make its companion characters feel more real and lived in the world we find ourselves in. According to sources with the game, the conversations and interactions you'll have with the NBC companions are going to be more impactful all around. Of course, the goal is to have players crafting their own narrative in the vast open world game, amid all the chaos. My immediate comparison is to Mass Effect, what it means you can have intimate having relationships while the threat of galactic annihilation is also taking place at the same time. As well as more in-depth and adaptive conversations, the companions will comment off the cuff about something you're doing or checking something out that just happened, helping to find more immersion for guests and gameplay in general. As someone who does this in real life, i.e. making sarcastic comments here and there, I immediately love this and hopefully I can find something to match my own personality. 
I'd love it if a robot we see in game, aka Vasco, is actually a sarcastic sort of loader bot character, as he's definitely going to be my sidekick. But either way, I'm excited to find someone like Gareth from Mass Effect, you know, someone who's just annoying. Starfield's companions have apparently distinct opinions about the actions of a playable character, offering motivations for players to pursue certain paths depending on whom they want to please or alienate. So if you want to piss off the alien, you know which path to take. Now you're probably wondering about the future of the game, but first it is building a game with longevity in mind, as in its endless pursuit vidoc. The studio says it essentially wants Starfleet to stand the test of time, just like how Skyrim and Fallout have at the same time. The idea being about the fantasy epic is still being talked about right now. I mean, people still play Skyrim to this day and talk about it like it came out yesterday. Also, didn't Skyrim just release on the Nintendo Switch last year or something weird like that? I mean, the game's bloody old at this point. I mean, speaking of which, Starfield then will probably get us ported to every conceivable bit of tech in the future. We'll probably be playing it on freaking glasses or something like that, or on mobile phones at this rate. It's going to be everywhere. Now, if you're like me and you're a nerd for details, you're probably wondering about development of the game. Well, Starfield's development has been a long run for the project. While the game was announced during Bethesda's E3 2018 press conference, which was quite a while ago now, it has of course been a long time in the making, as the company liked to put it. This is the first new intellectual property produced by Bethesda in 25 years, basically being described as Skyrim, but in space by Todd Howard, the director of the game, and a well-known name in the gaming industry. Apparently Bethesda have been wanting to make a space game for years, dating way back to 1994, when they almost produced a game based on the Traveller role-playing system, something I don't even remember. The design of Star Vader is referring to as NASA Punk, and I must say I'm a big fan of his idea, particularly as I'm still into my pop-punk music and I'm a big fan of my favourite film called Interstellar. What they mean by this design idea is that while it's set 300 years in the future, players can trace the technology and equipment back to various NASA space missions that we know from today. The narrative has also been crafted using real space missions, but obviously they've had to fill in the 300 year gap at the same time, because obviously they would have to. Active development of Starfield has been in progress since the release of Fallout 4 in 2015. The game moved out of pre-production by mid-2018 and was in a playable state, just before the release of a somewhat failed and highly controversial Fallout 76 game. In terms of a confirmed release date, Howard has mentioned a studio and development team are confident in the date of the end of this year in 2022, else they wouldn't be announcing it. Some of you might be interested in this, SpaceX, which is the Elon Musk company, even got involved in the development process for the game, well, a tiny bit involved. This was of course when Todd Howard visited the SpaceX facility for research and inspiration into the game. We're not sure what actually happened or if anything was taken away as inspiration for Starfield, but Howard has dropped a clue in the form of Helium-3, which is a speculative fuel for nuclear fusion, perhaps it will be used as a fuel source in the game. I mean, with all this exploring, I hope there's a chance to stop and refuel at some point. There's got to be some sort of backwater space station out there somewhere. I'm getting robot chicken flashbacks of filling up at a gas station with an X-Wing while someone's army just chopped off is getting us. Anyway, continuing on. Now, someone did share this with me as I was recording this video, so I'll mention it now. Some of you might be interested in the Collector's Edition. It will be pricey, bear in mind, as it has been a trademark for a Chronomark smartwatch. We're in a pound announcement about the likely pricey Collector's Edition inbound. It's called the LPV6 smartwatch. Zenimax, the parent company of Bethesda, trademarked it themselves on March 22nd. So I'd expect a collector's edition announcement sometime soon in April. As I've mentioned at the start of this video, the last few years have been a hit or miss with sci-fi games, promising the next gen of universe for tech and for players to explore the final frontier, but kind of dropping a ball at launch. So can Starfield pop it off? I'd love to see it personally. I was personally massively excited for the likes of Dual Universe, Starbase, and Halo Infinite, but it seems all of these latest sci-fi games have sort of dropped the ball and haven't really gone far in completing what they set out to actually do and fulfilling their objective. Yes, some games are early access like Dual Universe and Starbase, so they are taking some more time, but then you've got fully developed games like Halo Infinite where you expect more content at launch. So hopefully Starfield is going to be this game I can throw myself into and just lose myself in a new Final Frontier. Immersing yourself in a world where you can make robot companions or explore cities such as New Atlantis is something I know myself and many others are super excited about going forward. Do let me know what you think in the video comment section below. Is Starfield the type of game you're going to pick up and play as I am definitely curious. I am massively looking forward to playing Starfield but also covering it here on the channel. The game releases one day before my birthday on November 11th 2022 so now you definitely have to remember the date. 
Stick around for the latest updates and more on covering the game, including details you don't want to miss on Starfield. It's my next game I'm covering, and I can't wait to share more with you. I've been Captain Jack, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are so...